Number one is the stock of patients. As the number of infections come down, and so has the total stock of patients in our system. Most of them, great majority, are on home recovery program. It has stayed consistently above 20,000 patients at any one time throughout October, peaking at 26,000. 386 on 29th October. So the last week of October is when we have the worst. Uh, since then, it has been decreasing. It dipped below 20,000 on the 7th of November, and now it's just slightly over 15,000. And every day we continue to discharge about 3,000 patients. Oslo, majority from HRP. Second indicator, reproduction number of the disease, or R. This has been held at around 0 0.9 to 1 yeah. and I want to mention that we held R at about 0 0.9 to 1 despite a very noticeable increase in footfall throughout the past few weeks past, uh, throughout the island uh, over the past one two weeks because more and more people are coming out socializing and they are out and about and in fact today the footfall that we measured across popular destinations is only about 5% less than at the peak of the stabilization period. Oh, sorry, at the peak of the preparatory phase in early September. And if you remember, during the preparatory phase, we do allow five persons dining. And this is a good sign. It means that more human activity did not drive infections and hospitalizations up. And what it means is this, that our society is becoming more resilient to the virus. Third indicator is severe illnesses. At the peak of our current transmission wave, the average number of patients hospitalized needing oxygen supplementation or ICU care is about 420. That's a stock number at the peak. Now it is around 370. If you if we zoom in to just ICU, we had about 140 patients during the last week of October at the peak of this transmission. This has come down to about 110 now. As of last night, it was 110. Very importantly, the incidence of patients falling severely ill, needing ICU care or died, has come down. So we track that number longitudinally from August to September to October. The number has fallen from 12 per 1,000 infected individuals to 5 per 1,000, to 6 per 1,000, and then to 5 per 1,000, respectively. And it is likely that if we track beyond October to have a November number, I think very likely it will go even below 5. And this is significant, which means that every time you get a thousand people infected, you can now count on the fact that a fewer number will fall severely ill, needing ICU care or die, compared to say in August or September, that the number were, was higher then. What has contributed to this decline is the increased uptake of boosters by vaccinated seniors. And therefore, even if they are infected with boosters, they are less likely to fall severely ill. But more importantly is that fewer unvaccinated seniors are now getting infected. There is one more uh, additional consideration, which is timing. We are now in end November. Once we cross to December, there's a certain mood. And then we are moving closer towards year-end festivities. And there will be pent-up demand to want to go out. So as far as possible, we don't want to do an opening move that is significant in the month of December because we risk once opening, so social activities will spike up very high and it will drive a very, it, it can drive and spark off a new wave. So if we can open up earlier to allow society, families, friends to gradually ease into a festive mood. So we therefore have before us a valuable window of opportunity for us to open up further.